Hello everyone and welcome back to another Versatuner guide. So today we will be talking about the ignition timing and the intake air valve control. So in here there are many tables but we will mainly focus on the ignition dwell, the knock retard decrement 1 and 2, the increment 1 and 2 and the leading timing table 1 two, three, and the trailing timing, one, two, three. So in the ignition dwell, what I have noticed with my AEM performance coils, that about 15%, so go down here, if you have the AEM performance coils, um, about 15% at 6000 to 9000 rpm of ignition dwell will not hurt it will give you a, a little bit more performance um, and a stronger spark that is so yeah just type in 1.15 and multiply it now you have a better and stronger spark at 6000 to 9000 rpm where your where your power band mainly is so down here in the knock retard decrements we want to set it at at least two better three degrees that's how much the knock sensor will command the ecu to retard the timing um, if the engine knocks so yeah the decrement one is for the leading leading timing and the decrement two is for the training time um, same goes for the increment one and two one is for the leading timing so we can improve it or increase it by 0 0.5 if it doesn't knock and the uh, increment 2 we can increase it by 0 0.5 as well so in the leading timing table we want to focus on the 0 0.975 percent engine load remember that is actually times 100 so 93 percent of engine load to 125 percent of engine load and we want to select the whole range and we want to increase it by two so we have 32 degrees at max what we will now do is we want to stay lower or the um well retard the timing at a lower rpm and slowly increase it um, to well gain more power and make it smooth so this is actually nine we have eleven 15, 17, 21, 24, 27, 28, 29, 31, 32, yeah that's about what you want to do um, the whole cruising range and low load range isn't really worth adjusting because master did the whole tuning in their factory and they did a pretty good job what they did not do is well they they made it safe so each type of fuel will get the same results 
so you can put in 87 or 89 octane fuel and you will still not run into knock um, so yeah if you fill up with 91 or 93 octane um, you can increase the timing by a little bit more to gain a little bit more power um, I tested these values with European 98 octane and it didn't knock. I think that's similar to 91 octane in the US, but I don't know. You have to know. <laughs> um, so what you want to do is now copy these values and paste them in your tables. Now, um, for the trailing timing, for the trailing timing. So the trailing timing from the stock ECU is basically at low loads, you have five degrees of ignition split. At medium loads, you have about 10 degrees of ignition split and at high load, you have 15 degrees of ignition split. What you can do, um, what I've seen, is you can copy your whole leading map and you can paste it to the trailing map and reduce it by about 10 to 12 degrees. But I don't do that. I will try in the future. Um, but with a more modest split to see if I will start running into trouble. But yeah, that, that is maybe for an update video at a later time. But for now, what you now want to do is we set the timings from 93% uh, percent of engine load to 125. So we want to do that in the trailing timing table as well. So, so now in the trailing timing, you want to copy these values and you want to paste it in this table. What you will notice is that the timing is now the same as the leading timing and we want a split angle and what I run in my current software with 98 octane I run 10 degrees at maximum load so what you can do now is you have your whole ignition map you go down here put in 10 and subtract these values. Now you have exactly 10 degrees of ignition split for your whole map and now you can copy the whole map and paste it in the other timing maps. So yeah, that's basically the ignition tab. Now for the intake air valve control. So in here we find three air valves that will open at a certain RPM to let in more air into the engine and thus producing more power. Um, a general rule of thumb is if you have a better air intake you can set these values higher so the air wells will open up later and if you have a really restrictive air intake you set these lower to increase the airflow at an earlier stage of the RPM band. 
So I have a KNN air filter, so I did 6400 for both of the auxiliary port valves. And I increased the variable dynamic intake to 7600 RPM. That's really late, but it will generally not do much in terms of power on the street. Um, yeah, that's basically it. The variable fresh air duct, I like to set it to 5,400 RPM. And sector, secondary shutter valve, I leave untouched because, well, it does, doesn't do anything. It all already says 3,000 up to zero degrees Celsius engine coolant temperature and well the rest is zero so it's probably always open so yeah that's the intake air valve control and the ignition tab i thank you for watching if you made it this far and in the next video i will probably do um, some map comparison between the ignition timings what happens if you have a lower ignition timing than factory? What happens if you have too high of an ignition timing? Well, too high, at least uh, from like a normal standpoint without um, like knocking or anything. I do not want to damage my engine, but yeah, that would be the next video. And I thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.